In the level one course, you place text with the default by origin method, which places text at the initial data point and with the active justification. There are, however, several other placement methods that can be very useful in certain situations, and it's worth taking a look at them. Now, if you're going to work along with me, please keep your eye on the status line for the tool prompts. First, let's take a look at the current text settings. So element and text styles. And I'm working in the architectural font with a height and width of one master unit. In this case, that's feet, but that could be any master unit. The next thing to look at is the spacing, and this is important for the line spacing setting, as we'll see later. And that's all I need to look at in the text styles box. I can dismiss that, and let's start the text tool, place text. Now, as I mentioned, the default method of placement is by origin. But if you click on the method list, you'll see seven more placement methods. Let's work through each one in turn. Let's try the fitted. Now, in this case, the text that we place is fitted between two data points, as you'll see. So we need some text in the text editor box. Right now, I'm using center top justification, but we can change that. Let's change that to left bottom. And notice that the text moves along to reflect that justification. Now when we place the text, we simply data point twice. Once to start the text, and then once to fit the text between the second data point. Notice, of course, that as you drag the text for the second data point, the text enlarges, almost like a stretch. So we data point again, which places the text. Let's try a different method. Let's go to view independent. In this case, it means that the text will remain oriented to the drawing. And if we rotate the view, the text will remain oriented to the view orientation, not the drawing orientation. Let's try that and see. I'm going to place it close to this line here. I'm going to go to element selection to dismiss the text tools. Now keep your eye on this particular piece of text in relation to this line. And let's rotate the view. Two points. Rotate the view from there to there. The line has rotated, but the text is still oriented with the view itself, not the drawing. Let's undo that, view previous, and back again. There are several uses for this, particularly if you're placing titles in a drawing which need to remain horizontal, however the view is rotated. On to the next method, back to the text tool. Next one is fitted VI, which simply means fitted and view independent. So it combines the last two methods we've looked at. So again, let's put some text into place and let's place the text. I'll place it here and I drag it for the fitted part of it. Left click to place it. Now let's go and rotate the view. Two points again. I'll use this line again. Keep your eye on that text. Notice that this text was view independent. And this is the fitted text, view independent. Let's take this back to normal orientation. Rotate, unrotate it. And we can zoom in and zoom out a little bit. There. Back to the place text tool. Next method is above element. So we'll have a look at that. Let's zoom into the line and we'll place it above this element. Text is in place. Identify the element and the sample text shows now above the element. Now, I have not yet data pointed to accept that placement. I can still change the justification if I wish before accepting. So let's go up and change. Let's make this center center. And my text moves into the center of the line now. And just for contrast, let's try a right center. Text moves off to the right because the insertion point is to the right of the text. Obviously, you will likely want the center center. And now I can left click to accept the placement. Left click, and the text is in place. The next method is below the element. Obviously, that 
does exactly the opposite of the previous one. And before I do that, just let me move this out of the way a little bit first. Give us some room back to the text tool. We're below element, enter the text. And of course, I'm cheating a bit by copying my text in. And select the line, and it's below. Again, I can change the justification if I wish. Left click to accept it. Now, before I get to the next example, I'm going to undo those two. Need to go back to the element selection, to a control Z and a control Z and a control Z. And let's move this back where it was and go on to the next one. Text tool again, put my text into place. And we're now on the element. I'll leave center center for the moment. Click on the line and the text is overlaid over the line. What happens if we change the orientation? Let's make it left center and right center. In every case, the text simply overlays the line. Take it back to, say, center top. Doesn't make a lot of difference, obviously, since the text is actually in the line itself. Left click to accept, and the line is cut so that the text is fully visible in that element. That may or may not be what you want, but that's how the tool works. The next tool is a long element, and I need to get at my curve here. Everything's in place. Let's do the along the element. And we select, and the text pops into place either above or below the element, depending on where I move my cursor. And again, of course, the justification makes a big difference. Let's try left center, off to the left, right center, off to the right. We'll stick with center center again, and let's place it above. So left click to place the text. Now, what would happen if I had a long text string? Well, let's try it and see. Up in the text box, let's keep adding text. Let's keep adding bits of text to this. We might as well use the same thing. Since this is neatly in my Windows saved, there's a fairly long piece of text. Let's try that using the same tool. Click on the element, drag it down. And what we see is that the text doesn't follow the curve. Once we get outside the curve, the text is placed in a straight line rather than curved with the curve. This might be quite useful for a special effect. You might try different uh, justifications of that type of placement and see what actually happens to text when you have a right or a left justification preference. The next method is word wrap. Click on that. Now notice that the text editor box disappears. And it's waiting for me to enter the first corner of the text box. So let's oblige and create a text box here. Now I'm not going to make it very wide. And the depth actually doesn't matter. And I'll show you why. I'll make it quite a shallow depth here. As soon as I place the second data point, then the text editor box returns and I can start writing my text. Well, I have some already copied, and it's showing me how my text will look in the box. I'm going to change the justification to top left, which will change the justification of the text in there. And let's move that out of the way, and let's click on the box there. So the box has defined the width of the text, but not particularly the length of the text. And the text can actually hang out at the bottom of the box, and it doesn't matter. It will still be there. So anytime you need to specifically define the width of a text string of a fair size, then this is the way to do it. So practice this and make different size boxes with a fairly long text string, just to see what happens to the different words. And there's obviously a, a minimum that the process will accept. If you have a long word, it will likely wrap outside of the box, at least by a small amount. Now, one last thing, which is not part of the method itself, but which often works quite well for certain circumstances, is that you can use the element selection tool to stretch text. As soon as you select a text string, you'll see the handle showing up. And depending on the actual 
font that you're using, you can grab a handle and change the text size. So we're technically stretching text here. Some fonts will let you drag the corners both up and along so you can get different heights of text and different widths. This particular text doesn't. It's not capable of doing that. If you grab a middle piece, it again simply enlarges the text, nothing else. But it does come in useful sometimes. For example, if you need the same font for a title of something, but the title needs to be larger than the general text in a drawing, then copy a piece of text over, highlight it, grab the handles, make it larger, and edit the text. When I'm working with text, in most cases, I will place a small piece of text in the drawing in the style that I want. And then for all the rest of the text of that type, I'll simply copy that piece of text all over the drawing where I need text to be placed. And then I go back and simply edit that text in place. Now that's simply a choice. It's probably because I'm fairly lazy and, I, <laughs> and I'll try and do things the, the simplest way possible. And to me, placing small samples of text in the appropriate places, then editing makes a little more sense to me. However, it's a personal thing. Might try that one time and see how it goes for you. Anyway, as always, go forth and practice, please. Try all the methods that we've just discussed and enter different lengths of text, different styles of text, and see how they work for you.